It's against the law to punish children by sending them to prison, but 4,000 under 17 spent time behind bars last year. Tonight, World in Action looks at how they came to be there. Any policeman in London will tell you that there has been a worrying increase in juvenile crime over the past few years. Started going out and nicking things out of shops and then started nicking motorbikes. Done breaking ins and um, stealing. Robbery, theft and about 20 muggings. Thieving habits and other uh, law-breaking things, but I'm easily led, so the police say. I went out one night and got drunk. I started up a fire. When I had a few drinks, I just get a bit silly and start messing about. I suppose I am unruly, really. Four, van six. Last year in London, 7,000 children between the age of 10 and 16 were arrested for motor vehicle offences, mostly for taking and driving away cars. It can happen as easily as in this reconstruction. Don't bottle out a bit more. I want radio, boy. Would you like keys, anyway? Yeah, come on. Should be allowed. <laughs> The vast majority of them don't go out planning to get involved in crime. Oh, man. <laughs> you can't drive. <laughs> you learn to drive. You quite often get three or four youngsters, and you, you could have uh, three or four different nationalities, and they all go around together. They're mates together. They get involved together. Do you know why you're here? For Nick in the car, sir. For riding in a stolen car. You realise that by riding in a stolen car, you've broken the law. Yes, sir. You realise that coming here is instead of going before a juvenile court? Yes, sir. How would you feel if that car had crashed and had killed somebody? Don't know. The police started juvenile bureaus in 1969. One of their aims was to check juvenile crime at an early stage to prevent it getting to court. I would like to get the youngster in the early days before it's necessary to get him in a lock-up situation. This is the beauty of the cautioning system. If you can get there early enough, then possibly you can prevent any necessity from ever going before a court. Now, if you break the law again, you will go before a juvenile court, and if you're convicted, you will have a criminal record that will stay with you for the rest of your life. Now, let this be the first and last time that you break the law. Right, now, I want to so you to sign this form to the effect that you've been cautioned. More than 90,000 juveniles were cautioned by the police for a first offence last year. For those the caution did not deter, the next stop was to appear before a juvenile court. A juvenile court is run informally. The defendant faces a bench of three magistrates. The police give evidence and a number of social services experts report on the child's welfare and background. The scene you're about to see has been reconstructed. On your list, madam. Stephen Watt. No parents present, but there is a guardian. Magistrates, police and social workers all play out their everyday roles. The case, though typical, is fictional, and Stephen is portrayed by a child actor. Please also say that you drove this motor car without a proper license. Do you admit that or deny it? Admit. Please also say you drove this motor car without proper insurance. Do you admit that or deny it? Admit. Sit down, please. <coughs> Sit down. Listen to what the officer says. Yes, the sir. brief facts of this case, Your Worship, sir, at 3 o'clock this morning, I was driving a police car west along King's Road towards the high road. Ahead of me, I saw Stephen driving a red Fiat motor car. There are 12 previous offences. In the first instance, on the 30th of May in 1975, at Islington Juvenile Court, on a charge of theft, 
A clear order was made to the London Borough of Islington. This boy, Robert, is not an actor. When he was 15, after other small offences, he got into real trouble and was kept in a prison establishment for four weeks before his trial. He then got a conditional discharge. We asked him how, some years earlier, he first got into trouble. Bored in the net mostly. Didn't have much money or anything to buy things. So what did he do? Just went out nicking sweets and things like that. What did you end up nicking? I ended up nicking motorbikes and breaking into houses and shops and things. Did you find it frightening when you went to court? No. When I got put away, I did. It was just a shock first because I'd got off so many times. But the other times when I've got off, I just walked out and laughed about it. Which I shouldn't have done, really. And lastly, madam, on the 10th of January 1977, at Islington Juvenile Court, he was on a charge of attempted theft and was remanded for three weeks for reports. The social worker is in court, madam, Mr. Kofi, and he can give you more details. I see. Stephen, that's correct, is it? Those charges we've heard? No, not all of them. Well, what isn't correct? The last one. The attempted theft? Yes. You're saying you didn't do it, but it, you were found guilty in court, that's right, is it? Yes. We'll consider it as 11 convictions. Um, Mr. Coffey, would you like to tell us a bit about Stephen? Yes, madam. Uh, madam, uh, Stephen comes from a family of six. He's the eldest boy in the family. Uh, his parents were divorced in 1968, and mother had custody of all the children. Can you think of anything that anyone could have done that would have stopped you getting into trouble? And if my mum and dad had gotten a bit better in it, it would have helped, but mostly it was my fault. The first time you went to court, what happened? I got the three pound fine and the conditional discharge. The second time I got. £16 fine and two years probation. And then when I went for the houses, I got a recommended postal sentence to about a crown court. And they reminded me to latch me up. A prison day starts for a child at 6 a.m. Although it's against the law for any child to be sent to prison as a sentence, he can be sent to prison on remand as a holding operation for the courts. But first the courts must certify him unruly, meaning he's likely to run away or is too violent to be held except behind bars. Why don't you get... Although some children have to be remanded between the time when they appear at court and the trial, I think normally it is ideal that if they cannot go back to their home, that they should be in some sort of community home. What is very worrying is the number of children who are accommodated in prison establishments. 16, sir. The trouble is that there are no alternative facilities. You know, there's an awful lot of trouble when we instituted internment without trial in Northern Ireland. Now, we have virtually the same system here, only we're dealing with school children, all of whom are, remember, innocent. They've not yet been convicted. And yet, incredibly, there seems to be no major public outcry, no um, controversy about this particular issue. Well, I think that's rather emotive language. I mean, whether you are dealing with a child or an adult, there may well be circumstances in which it is essential to keep that person contained in the order at the lowest to ensure that they appear at court and in, in two or three weeks' time. And in the case of children, it is necessary to make further inquiries to find out more about the child. Now, if that child insists on running away uh, and, in fact, possibly doing himself damage and doing more damage to the community, committing more offences, then that child has got to be locked up. I think there is a need for a very small minority of the four to six, 6,000 a year that go through prison establishments at the moment. Probably a small minority of them do require 
putting in secure accommodation. But I stress a small minority. I think the vast majority can be properly looked after and rehabilitated in the community. If it's quite inappropriate for the child to go back home, as it may be, he may come from a particularly disturbed background, it may be possible to put the child in some sort of foster home rather than in a, a children's home. But uh, the real problem is the, is the difficult child, the absconder, the very disturbed child, who cannot even be looked after in an ordinary children's home. Come on, up your bench. They're all imbued with the philosophy that the way you deal with difficult people is to lock them away. And that's the easy way of dealing with them. It's a very expensive way, but it's the easy way. You just lock them behind doors and you forget about them. That isn't the way to deal with them. It's certainly not the way to rehabilitate. It's certainly not the way to give them any commitment to the society against which they are at present offending. The much more difficult, the much more adventurous, but in the end I suggest the much more uh, successful way is to say, all right, these are difficult. Perhaps they need punishing, perhaps they need caring. But let us try to deal with them in the community. Let us have a variant, for example, for juveniles, of the community service order. A lot of the boys that are in prison establishments are boys who are there for joyriding, for taking cars. So what better than to deal with them by putting them on a project where they will actually work with cars, where they will drive cars, where they will learn uh, car maintenance, mechanical engineering and take it from there. You are certainly not going to deal with them by putting them in a community home or in secure units and certainly not in a prison service establishment. Magistrates continue to send children to prison on remand because they maintain the local authorities don't provide enough alternative lock-up accommodation. In London, for example, there's one local authority-run home with ten lock-up places to service the entire London area. We went to one of many homes with no lock-up accommodation run by Islington Borough Council in Watford. I think of the 32 children that we cater for here at Gisborne, less than 50% possibly come through the courts. The majority are from broken home situations or family situations where the unit has totally perhaps collapsed and the child has not attended school for a number of years and therefore tended to move into the delinquent areas. If the child has to remain with us, then we would look very much at um, creating the growth and development to the point where the child can, could cope uh, and survive in the local community. For what we're about to say, my Lord makes you truly thank for me. Amen. I think it's good, because all the kids help each other. And um, most of the kids here get on well together. And it's not um, that strict or anything, there's restrictions, but otherwise it's quite free. Gisborne House deals with problems of discipline, not by locking children up, but by depriving them of privileges, or early to bed. We asked the superintendent if he ever refused a place to children who were very disturbed. Yes, there are occasions when we have to say no, we can't take a particular child. I think we have to look, before children come to Gisborne, we have to look very much at whether or not we're going to be able to meet that um, child's needs and if it's felt that we can't then the exercise would be pointless Stephen where were you actually during this week's oh. Went out with a friend, you know. Yes, friend, but you know. where? You know, around. Do you think we should retire? Yes, I think, I think so. so. Thank you. Yeah. It really looks as though the social services have done a great deal for him. I think they've really done their stuff and they've tried everything, <laughs> really. Well, he's certainly unruly, and we've mm. got to make an unruly mm. certificate. Not violent, but he's no. absconded. Absconding mm. and committing offences whilst on bail. Mm. And uh, Stamford House have a place in the uh, enclosed unit. Well, mm. well, that would be all right. Yes. Would. Mm. Otherwise, it looks like Latchmill. Yeah. I hate Latchmill. I really, it's like a kid's prison, really, isn't it? Yes. But I can't see you now. He's absconded, really, from everywhere he's been placed mm. in the past, hasn't he? Yeah. Mm. And also, he's committed further crimes mm. whilst well, on bail. Mm. Well, mm. that's it then. So, really, no alternative. Can't I don't... Your sentence. 
Yeah, I think so. And um, legal aid, and as quickly as possible. An unruly certificate, because if I they ask for it. Mm. Yes, mm. that's rather exciting. There's always a very real difficulty when anyone gets to the point where they feel they have to ask the court, some local authority, to grant a certificate of unruliness. Uh, it's an admission of failure on our part to provide appropriately for the child's care. It means that our facilities have proved inadequate. Uh, but we've tried everything within the range of our facilities without success. And it's certainly with a degree of sadness that we have to make the, the application. Well, then it does look like an unruliness. Yes, doesn't no, it? I don't see there's really any alternative. So you'll have to go to Latchmere and we'll see you three weeks time. Three yes, weeks. Ma'am. We'll see you in three weeks time. Right, off you go. to legislate to say that no child under the age of 16 shall, under any circumstances, go to prison service establishments. If then we close that road, the onus will be thrown back upon the government, upon local authorities, and indeed also upon magistrates to find other avenues of dealing with this problem. Unfortunately, until someone kicks it up the backside and says that, quite emphatically, that we are not prepared to tolerate, in our kind of society, the imprisonment before trial of school children, then no government will act. And this is, of course, a problem that every successive government has faced since 1969, and they will continue to sit on the problem until public opinion is vociferous and then emphatic enough. Well, I'm quite worried about it. I don't think it's at all suitable. And uh, as soon as we can make arrangements, I think we ought to um, uh, end it, but when I say as soon as we can make arrangements, this is going to be quite some considerable time because we will have to put in the appropriate accommodation, we'll have to train the right staff, uh, and we'll also have to change attitudes as well, I think. So in the meantime, you'd envisage it continuing? I'm afraid so, yes, for some, uh, some time into the foreseeable future. I ended the remand of uh, girls under 14 to prison uh, last autumn. Uh, and at some stage we will make another step, but I can't foresee when that will be. We want to move towards the ending of remand uh, of young people to prison under the age of 17, but we are constrained. Any single file, keep yourself closed up. Classroom four, sir. Mahone. Foster. 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 Saville, Ferguson. The individual may very well have run away from home, played truant from school, absconded from a community home, and for the first time they are in an environment that they cannot run away from. Here they have to conform to certain standards. They must attend school. There's no playing truant. They have to get up when they're told to get up. Uh, they can't run away from home. So for the first time they're in a settled environment. And I believe, or it is my opinion, that the majority of them quite appreciate this. Classroom three, sir. Don't look at me. Face your front. Well, there's nothing nice about this place anyway. Nothing nice about it. You do games in it. I suppose it's about the nicest thing about it. And how long have you been here? Two weeks. Does that seem like a long time? A lifetime. What do you feel about being locked out? I look forward to it now, because I'm all out all day working, scrubbing my fingers away. And I come back and look for good rest, so I don't mind being locked up. Perhaps one of the main things we, we can teach these boys, or these young lads, is uh, self-discipline. And one would hope that one could teach them to lead a better useful life on discharge. What were the other kids like there? What did they talk about? crime all the time, Just bragging about what they've done and what they're going to do when they get out and things. What, you think a lot of things actually get planned inside? Yeah. And they talk about like, teaching each other how to do things, telling each other how to do them. If you're not a bad criminal, you, you get mixed up with other big criminals in prison 
or a place like this, and then uh, you think about doing bigger jobs when you get out. Me and my cellmate are always talking about this. When we get out, we'll meet up. I think about doing the old cigarette machine. <laughs> A remand centre is like a transit camp. The average length of stay for a child is three to four weeks. The prison service makes some concessions to children on remand. They're allowed games and schooling if of school age. No one has seen him since. Well done. Good. But it does seem a severe device to ensure the child turns up to court. Even a short-term stay looks like punishing the individual before he's been tried or his guilt established. Some magistrates take this term into account on later sentencing. Well, I suppose we've got two difficulties, really, haven't we? Uh, one is that most people would agree, having seen a film such as this, that young children shouldn't be locked in prisons or demand centres. On the other hand, most people would agree, too, that society need, needs protection, that many of these youngsters can be regarded as extremely dangerous and violent criminals. It's only the last resort uh, when all other steps have failed, such as should society accept the need to put away children into penal establishments. A small minority of children, for their own sakes, as well as for the sake of society, need the help and protection and care that, that can be provided in secure, secure circumstances. But for the majority who today are in community home schools, or indeed in penal establishments done by the prison service, they could be cared for in the community if only we had a more tolerant, caring attitude on the part of society generally. One non-residential way of caring for disturbed children is by involving them in intermediate treatment schemes near their homes. Local authorities run centres with professional and volunteer labour that involve children in learning anything from car maintenance to cookery. Schemes like this also have the advantage of being cheaper on the local authority than the high cost of keeping a child in a community home, which can cost as much as £100 per week. Another alternative for the disturbed child who may need more round-the-clock care is to place him with foster parents. This too is cheaper than holding a child in a local authority home, almost half the price in fact. The foster parents may be paid up to £60 per week. Mr and Mrs Leach of Coventry are acting as foster parents to Laz Kovacs. Laz is 14 years old. He's been in trouble with the police and courts in the past. Any what's in that or...? Uh... A bit. Let's have a little bit. Right? Just a Can you tell me about what happened when you ran away to Wolverhampton? <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Um, when I ran away to Wolverhampton. Tell me how you got to Wolverhampton. Oh. What was the cause of it? Lady! I don't know. I just ran away. I was on a bus um, when I was going to school. And, and this kid was stirring it on a bus. And then when we got the bus, I said, you're going to get a smack in the mouth. And he said, oh, yeah, he laughed about it. Then I just turned around and I got him. And he, and he said, I'm going to see something about you. And he, and he had a big, big lump on his lip. And everyone came to me and said, you're in trouble, you're going you're gonna to be in trouble now. So I just ran off. What happened when these two caught you up? When, wait, Mum and Dad? Who caught you up first? Uh, I, uh, I came home. <laughs> Mum brought me home. She got mad about the fog. Well, we kept very quiet on the way. Mm. Oh, okay. what, what did you think? I think, on the way home, oh. as we were coming, I thought that you was going to hit me in the car. I, th I threatened her, didn't you? Yeah. So I kept my hand by my ears like this, <laughs> just in case. Local authorities desperately need foster parents to care for children. Children who are difficult and disturbed, like those described in, in the, this, this programme, who have who've committed offences, if they're at all interested in helping uh, foster the child, get in touch with the local social services department. Many local authorities are, are, are establishing preventive schemes, intermediate treatment schemes of that kind, which require volunteers, people who are prepared to work with children, to use their knowledge and skills of their daily job and interests, to help lo local authorities meet the needs of children in their area. So if they're prepared to volunteer, either in that way or as foster parents, ask them to get in touch with their director of social services in the locality where they live. How do you feel about it looking back? I think I'm stupid. What do other kids think about it? They all think it's a big laugh until it happens to them. 
So you don't think that even going to Latchmere really made any difference to you, finally? No, when I got off at Crown Court, that's what made the difference. So now I won't get a chance next time. What's your full name, son? Charles Henry Williamson. And how old are you? Sixteen. Right, empty your pockets onto the table, son. Uh, nothing. Sir. Nothing at all. Nothing. Right, let's have a screen. Right, your prison number, son, will be three four seven nine three one. Are you still at school, unemployed, or up where you working? Uh, still at school, sir. Still at school. Jacket down to the level, sir. And your shirt. What's the colour of your socks, son? Grey, sir. Just sign there. And that's just for all the clothes that you're doing to me.